Hello everyone and welcome once again to Let's Play Skyrim. You will recall that last time, in addition to clearing of Anjanzel, we finally finished raising <coughs> enchanting. Now the, uh, oh I don't want to be dual casting it. Let's put stone flesh in one hand and oak flesh in the other. However, because, uh, I've accrued extra experience in mainly through lockpicking and speech. I've got a few other leveling benchmarks to reach before we can level up and progress the crafting loop, which is not a big deal. They're going to go quickly. So, what we've got here, on our way to the next location of Angervund, is a new random encounter. This one is called Vampire Masquerade, I think. It's either Vampire Masquerade or Vampire Trick. I'm pretty sure this one's Masquerade. There are three vampires who have killed three Vigilants of Stendar and are dressed in their outfits. Combat is going to be mostly the same as it has been, with uh, one notable exception, in that I'm going to try and get hit a few times. Because, uh, this is Vampire Masquerade, so I'll take it off that list. I'm going to try and get hit, because I'm trying to raise light armor. But other than that, I'm just going to get Alteration to 30 as I go with these spells, and then Conjuration to 40, and then we'll see what happens. What I don't want is their stu to get hit with their stupid spell. Vampire Fledgling is down. Has Vampire Dust and nothing else I really care about. Oh, good. I was hoping somebody might it might deign to hit me. Alterations at 28. That's cool. Vampire's got nothing I really care about. Same with this vampire fledgling. Alright, well. That's that, I suppose. Wasn't as productive as I would have liked. <laughs> Mostly because nothing hit me, but... I imagine that'll change. And vampires are just a bad option because they mostly attack with magic. We'll fare better inside Angervund, I think. So we've already mined all the ore. I think I even explicitly pointed out the path to this place earlier. We're just now finally ready to get in there and explore it. So we can take the shortcut through the main road to skip what's really just a massive switchback. Alterations at 28, it won't take long before it hits 30. Can probably take a few hits from this bear. That'll help.
Oh, what the hell? Perfect. You know, that is what I'm talking about. Now, before too long at all, I'm going to need restoration at 70. So I'm going to go ahead and start using healing spells on myself. I do notice that, rather unfortunately... My uh, Magicka regeneration is back to normal. These are, of course, the perils of switching away from those robes I'd been wearing. I also noticed my movement speed is down. That's why I was so surprised when that bear caught me. Anyway, we've discovered Anger Wound. Let's go ahead and summon the horse right quick. Bonus, it'll regenerate my Magicka. And let's see what we can find out here. Not much in the barrel. A Dance in Fire V7, I believe we've read. This, yes, we have. The Speech Skill Book. And Midressi's Notes. New book, obviously, pertains to this dungeon. Madresi, Madrisi. I think it's Madrisi. That's what I'm going to go with. The Journal of Madrisi Dran, on Angervund. Whispers of this ancient temple have been few and far between, and most real knowledge seems similar to Angervund itself, buried and forgotten. Yet every story or legend I hear all seem to speak of immeasurable riches found deep within. Great treasure waits for the worthy adventurer, said one old fool after many false flirtations and tankards of mead. Though he may have been a nuisance, his information matches most of my research, specifically the location of Angervund. Tomorrow I will hire a mining team to assist me in my excavation and head towards the ruin. By this time next month, I shall be rich. M.D. Well, maybe. Let's head inside. I didn't see you there. You seem troubled. Of course I'm troubled. I'm on the verge of incredible wealth. But my cowardly workforce ran at the first sign of danger. What scared them off? We were excavating this old tomb when we opened a chamber full of corpses. The team took one look, turned tail, and ran. Haven't they seen dead bodies before? Well, probably not like these. The ones in there are all still walking around. In any case, if I can't get past the creatures in that room, I can't recover the treasure. I need more manpower. Maybe I could help you. Tell me more about this treasure. Legend says this tomb holds a treasure that bestows great power on the one who discovers it. Beyond that, not much more is known. Obviously, this treasure will fetch a good deal of gold, and I'm willing to let you share in the reward when we find it. In any case, if I can't get past the creatures in that room, I can't... Maybe I could help you. Say, that's not a bad idea. You look like you could handle yourself against these beasts. I'll tell you what. You help me get the treasure, and I'll split it with you. Deal? Deal. Excellent. With my brains and your brawn, that treasure will soon be mine. Yeah, ours. First, I need you to clear the main chamber of those monstrosities. I'll stay here until you're finished, planning our next move. Destroy the Draugr in Angervund, zero of three. And this quest is called Angervund. It's just another miscellaneous dungeon quest. She gives us the Angervund key later, so there's no need to worry about pickpocketing it. Well, let's just get going. Not much to find. 
so far. Couple of urns in here. Then shit gets real. Right around here with the Draugr. Light armor to 22. Alteration to 29. Gotta love that. I consider the way that Atronach is keeping her constantly staggered to be a very bad sign. Destroy the Draugr in Angerhund. One of three. There's 30 alteration. That's all I need for for now. So let's switch to bound sword and healing in the other hand. Actually, let's switch to bound sword and a glass shield. As with the shield, my, uh, armor rating will be higher. Spell Tome? Do I know Fury? No, that's a new spell. Novice level illusion spell. Not too terribly useful, but not bad either. Let's see if we can't track this guy down. There's 32 Conjuration. And there's 23 light armor. Completed. Destroy the Draugr in Angervund. Talk to Medrisi in Angervund. Sure, but let's... Heal up. And learn Fury. Oh, I did learn Fury. I need to take Fury off my spell list. There we go. Just the ones I'm pretty sure I'll actually use. There we go. Alright, let's search around this room, because Madrisi's making her way here. Angervund Ruins, locked requires key.
Angerfoon's catacombs. Locked requires key. I think that's about it. <coughs> Set this little burial urn hiding over here. What about these spots? Bars, bars, empty urn. We already checked that one, I think. Let me double check. Bars, bars, not even an empty urn. All right, well, let's go visit Madrisi. They're all dead. Completed. Talk to Madrisi and Angervund. I don't have time to talk. Keep moving. I suggest you move then. You know, I never noticed that platform before. Bet we can get up there. Hmm. These doors seem to be the only thing left between me and the treasure. Is there some way to open them? There'd better be. I didn't come all this way to leave empty handed. There must be a way to activate these doors deeper in the ruins. Here, take this key. It should open the doors on either side of the chamber. Find a way to open the gates. Angervund key added. All right, uh, let's let's see about up here first. I forgot I was in my head. I was playing Morrowind, where I could keep a shield equipped without actively using it, but I have to sacrifice my left hand if I want it on there. And the boost in armor rating means it more than makes sense. So we'll do the ruins first. Ah. <sighs> It's so nice to be done worrying about enchanting, I can't even tell you. Watch out for that pressure plate. Talking to you, Lydia. He says as he triggers it himself. Dude, I'd love it if you'd just wail on me a little. Thirty-three conjuration. Thirty-four conjuration. Thirty-five conjuration. I told you Bound Sword was great for that skill. Garnet and gold, and let's heal up. As we check out the rest of this room, copy of the Illusion Skill Book Before the Ages of Man, which we already read some time ago. I believe that's the actual way forward. We do have a novice locked chest here. Iron door. Burial urns. And that's it, for now. So let's head this way. Well, hold on. Let's refill our Magicka first. Thirty-six conjuration. Thirty-eight 
37 conjuration. Light armor to 24. Conjuration to 38. Good. You want to check out the upper level. It's weird, I distinctly recall there being something up here. Oh well. Maybe I am just misremembering. Certainly possible. It's been a while. Anyway, let's heal up. Get Bound Sword ready again in this hand. And let's just keep going. I don't need to worry about full magic anymore. I've already almost reached the benchmarks on all of those. Thirty-nine conjuration. Forty conjuration. All right, good. No, Lydia, it makes perfect sense to keep going after the summon. Really. Well, there's one dead Scourge. That's good. Not spell damage. That doesn't raise my armor skill. Fuckers. If they're not going to attack me, one thing I may as well do... Start trying to keep Lydia up and kicking. Whenever I'm not doing anything else. There's another one down. Okay. 
Light armor to 25. Of course, Lydia's after the Atronach. Even though the actual Draugr would die in one hit. There we go. Good. Good. We're already up on almost everything, except I also need to get smithing the 30, but... That one I can do outside a dungeon very easily. 42 restoration. That's delightful. Let's hit that lever. Search that urn. Unlock this chest. And head through this new passage to continue. Nothing important in there. I'm a big fan of this. Oh, Lydia, you stupid, stupid, stupid person. Ugh. Yeah, no, by all means. Step on the pressure plate so the battering ram kills me while I'm trying to armor trade on the Draugr. Twenty-six light armor. And now he's target switched. Still, that's fine. We've got a very good pace going. By the way, in case you're wondering, we're rapidly reaching the point where... ...being over-experienced where our worry will switch from being over-experienced to needing more. So I probably will just keep my light armor on, if you're wondering. From this point forward. As I take Bound Sword off my favorites list, too. No real use for it anymore. At least not at the moment. Really feels like there should be something here, but I don't see anything. Let's just move on, then. Ah. Big room with coffins. Awesome. Light armor to 27. Not gonna argue with that.
I find myself in the really strange position of not particularly caring if an archer targets me instead. That's as long as I can get clear after that first shot. Well, thanks for bringing him in here. That makes searching him a hell of a lot easier. Nice work, Draugr. There's 28 light armor. Gotta love that. Don't you dare get in the way, Lydia. Only two more ranks, and I'll have my light armor benchmark cleared, at least for the moment. It's an exciting thought. Look around in here. Don't see anything I care about. I wondered why his damage upgraded so much. It's because he was able to use Lydia's own ebony arrows on me. Oh, fuck that noise. And nobody even wants to screw with that. Unless you want to abandon your goddamn spells and come thwack me with your axe, we got nothing to talk about. Twenty nine light armor. Forty three restoration. See, this is all really good.
Very good. Up here we got a coin purse. And nothing else I care about. Nope, that might not be true. Bunch of golden gems. Never say no to that. Good night, douche canoe. Good. All right. He's it for this side. Let's head on over into Angervund. Where we're on the other side of some of those bars now. We can search some urns. Get ourselves a chest. Completed. Find a way to open the gates. Open the other gate. Well, okay. Nothing if not consistent, I suppose. Only one more door left. Hurry up. Sure, sure, sure. Let's head into here. Angerboomed catacombs. As I recall, this one's a hole dropper, so... Better be ready to commit. There's 30 light armor. Where the fuck is Lydia? Did she not follow me here? I bet she didn't. Right, come on, you. I'm gonna need you. It's once light armor hits 30, all light... What the hell? Is that where you stopped last time? I mean, I'm sure it is. Oh, I admit that corner's really confusing. Come on! You didn't expect me to kill these things myself, do you? There you go. Sheesh. Yeah, 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 whatever. Let's go. This time... She still didn't follow me! What the hell? God damn it, Lydia!
I don't have time to nurse you all the way into this. Get the fuck down the hole. Maybe one more. <laughs> of course, then it's going to target her, and I won't get my light armor rank. But, man, I don't know what else to do. There you go. You don't want to help? I will force you. So there. I've got your back. Lead on. I just want to make sure that's clear. There's 30 light armor. I'm good. Totally good with letting Lydia do everything now. Search this first room. I'll even backtrack a little. Good night, turd. Let's continue. Got a chest up here. It's always nice. With an empty grand soul gem. Well, that will be the last one we need for the crafting loop. Which is nice. He's down, and we continue on. There's a restless flavor, Draugr. Don't back up and shoot. We're all good. Well, the Restless is down. He's got an empty Lesser Soul Gem. Which I'll still take, of course. They're still useful, after all.
Good night, douche canoe. Good. Let's keep on going. Oh, you know what I just realized? I can upgrade Lydia to Daedric arrows. Or I thought I could. I could have sworn I found Daedric arrows in the, uh, on one of the Centurion, Centurion bodies in Avanchen's L. I guess I hallucinated it. Doesn't matter much, she's doing fine. She's doing just fine. Onward? Onward. There's at least one more, but let's just take it slow. We got a novice locked chest here. And holy shit, a Draugr Death Lord. I need to check his level. Never mind, that pretty much. Clears, clears it up for me. Only 30. So I cannot use him for the Grand Soul Gem. Well, and I couldn't anyway, because I don't have my uh, soul trapping thing here. Note the giant Canis roots in this room. Here, as I can tell, they don't serve any special purpose. They're just kind of there, being gigantic. There are four of them. We got an unlocked chest tucked away back here. Nothing in it but a little gold. I am really worried that hit Lydia. Nope, she's good. Quit backing away. Just get in there and kill him. That's what I'm talking about. Onward. Now there is a pressure plate there that Lydia is all but guaranteed to step on. But she appears to have been relatively unscathed by it. That's nice. Now we got three Draugr in the room up ahead. They all tend to be high level. One's a melee scourge, and there are two. There are two archers. I can't say for sure what type they are yet. Most of the time when I play, they've been death lords, but you never know what's gonna happen.
while he's down. That's good. Let's roll up here then. Looks like we got a Scourge and a Death Lord from what I can see. Why are you getting your bow and arrow out? He's in melee range. She's just so dumb sometimes. Attack! Oh, yep, yep. Everybody's shouts are recharged. I think because you stood there so long. See, I could see that arrow was coming at me. I wanted no part of it. Okay, here's the one that just got killed. Two layers is usually more than enough. Except when Lydia does that stupid thing where she runs backward as she swings. Which of course results in her not connecting. All's well that ends well. Alright, let's roll. That's it for what turns out to be quite a beast of a room. Unfortunately, we still aren't clear. We can see another Death Lord already. I kind of forgot, these catacombs are just a friggin' gauntlet of Draugr. Alright, come on now. Enough of this. Finish him. There we go. Good, good. Onward. I keep forgetting I'm not muffled anymore either. That's why things can hear me so well. All right, let's just keep trucking. Let's 
Searching for useful shit. Like that empty petty soul gem. I'm a little confused about why I couldn't mark him, I'm not gonna lie. There's loose gold on both levels of this particular... I don't even know what you call it. Beer, maybe. Nooks. Anyway, I don't really want to go deeper, because I might wake up more, but... I want to at least finish searching the area I have made it to. Well, I see at least one more. I'd like it if he was low level, so I could just get through him. Mostly I've just gotten in a hurry because all my skills are up except smithing. I want to get back to town and actually level up. Of course, doesn't make sense to leave mid-dungeon. We need to finish clearing it first. But at some point, you just want to say, All right, haven't I killed enough Draugr now? Wasn't 20 enough? Why does, why does it have to be 25? Oh, well. We got one here. It's another Scourge. Shit. At least the other one's only restless. That much is good. Kill Cam to the Scourge. And the Restless is down too. Good. Alright, well, how far can we get now? Let's see. Oh, it's a Draugr Draugr. Aww. Poor little guy. He doesn't even get to have battle music. Oh, thank God, I needed a little break. Oh, fucking hell. Another one? Alright, well that one's only restless. There's another one. Probably stronger. Yep, it's either a Scourge or a Death Lord. It's a Scourge. This might finally be it, though.
There's your restless. He's down. And the Scourge is down too. Good. Alright, let's check out that next room. Already checked that urn. I hear at least one more. There he is. Oh, just kidding. The number is three. Well, fuck. And of course, one of them had to be a Scourge. We couldn't be spared the stall tactics of the Shouts, could we? No, of course not. Oh well. do what I can to loot the rest of this room right quick. Alright, we're good. I do think we're almost through this zone. This re this one really might be it. We'll find out, of course. Oh, good. Everyone's dead. Alright. Now, what's up here? Wraith's Wedding Dowry, I think, is actually a new book. I'll need to check right quick to be sure. It is. Let's take it off the list and read it. That doesn't happen very often anymore. The Wraith's Wedding Dowry by Voltha Grayamort, translated by Apthorn. <clears throat> the poets are right. There is something life-changing about being in love, said Kepkajna Graminfang, sometimes called the Wraith. I haven't wanted to rob anyone or anything in weeks. Why, the other day I saw the door wide open at a wealthy merchant's house, but my mind was fully occupied with what I should wear on my wedding day. <clears throat> You've been out of the right society for very long now, frowned her friend Cargill approvingly. You never told me what happened to your first husband, you know, the one the shaman gave you. Torn apart by ash ghouls, smiled Kepkajna dreamily. It was rather saddish, but I know nothing like that would happen to Wadwarg. No life of adventure for him. He's practically an imperial. In fact, he is one. Did I tell you how we met? Hundreds of times, grumbled Cargill, reaching for his flagon. He was your jailer, and he refused you food until you promised to marry him. Have you ever heard of anything so madly romantic in all your life, sighed Kipkajna, and then grew serious. I was going to say that I hope my old friends will wish me well, but as old Basriel used to say, there's no point in hoping for what cannot be. We'll leave with the Imperial Knights for Balmora immediately after the wedding, but as long as we're in Dagenfell, the gang will find some way of disrupting my love life and bring me back to the light. I know it. As the days approached towards the Wraith's wedding day, there was certainly something sinister in the air that Kipkajna could smell when she was not transported by heady bliss. Dark figures seemed to shift in the shadows and disappear when approached. She recognized the clothing of some beggars near Wadborg's cottage as costumes, but the mendicants hurried away before she could recognize which of her old gang was stalking her. But these moments of apprehension were few. Kepkajna was truly happy, making arrangements for the ceremony to be performed at the very dungeon where Wadborg had imprisoned her.
abandoned her. Her father was long since dead, another victim of the Ash Ghouls, but her fiancé's commander volunteered to act in his behalf. Of course, Kepkajna had to supply her own dowry. She spent every last mark of her savings of ill-gotten gain to buy her beloved a truly wonderful present. The wedding was set for the stroke of midnight, as is orc tradition. The handmaidens, wives of imperial officers, were busily sewing her into her gown of red velvet and fine gold filigree in the mid-morning. Dolcetta, one of the handmaidens, remarked that she had heard that Kepkajna had bought Wadborg a truly beautiful gift for her dowry. Let me show it to you, Kepkajna giggled, dashing from the room half-dressed to her hidden alcove. The present had been stolen. The women were horrified, but the wraith found herself merely irritated, not surprised. This was truly the old gang's style. They knew that a wedding ceremony without a dowry was marked as unlucky. She asked her handmaidens to finish dressing her quickly, while she pondered what the burglars would have done with her treasure. The whole region was honeycombed with secret lairs and abandoned sites thieves used to store their loot. There were obvious places, of course, but after much reflection, she thought of where she would have put it under similar circumstances. Once the handmaidens, once the handmaids had finished, Kepkajna bade them to make certain that the ceremony went on as scheduled, and not to fret as she might be a little late. She wrapped herself in a shawl to protect her gown from dungeon dust, and set off for the shrine of Mal. Malakath. The Wraith had never before attempted to rob her own friends, and though she was peeved at them for trying to ruin her happiness, she had no interest in hurting them physically. Her style was to avoid conflict, though she knew it would be inevitable. The lessons her mentor Cargol had given her had helped her avoid the lances and blades of guards and imperial knights over the years. Now she would see if they would allow her to survive a den of thieves and the unknown dangers of the shrine, without, most importantly, ruining her dress. The desolate place was so empty as she delved into it that she feared she might have made a miscalculation. It was not until she found the small room hidden down a long corridor that she knew she was at the right place, and that it was well suited for an ambush. She grabbed the chest with her treasure within, and turned to face the assault. Two of her old gang, Yoram and Yori, the Red Guard twin brother and sister, were outside the door as she came from the room. They knew the wraith better than to taunt her, and immediately attacked. Yoram struck out with a left thrust of his blade, while Yori sought to rush her. The wraith neatly stepped, sidestepped Yori, while dropping her weight to her rear left leg, shifting her right shoulder to to the left to slip past Yoram's strike. The twins crashed into one another and kept Kajna passed swiftly on. Almost immediately, she was set on by the Argonian Binyar, his mace whistling through the air at her head. They had never much liked one another. The wraith snapped into a duck, so the mace whacked with a tremendous clamor against the stone wall. Binyar was thrown off balance, giving her a few seconds lead, hurrying up the passage. Ahead, she could smell the fresh night air. The last of her dowry, dowry's defenders was Sorok, an orc with whom she had shared a brief romance. It was he who Kepkajna knew had masterminded the theft. In a way and in context, she thought his devotion to her misery was rather sweet. At the moment, though, she was most concerned with avoiding his barbed axe that seemed ideal for breaking her dress's fine stitchwork into the flesh beneath. Bending her knees slightly, bobbing to avoid strikes to the head, weaving her head to confuse Sorok of her next move, shuffling her feet arrhythmically, the wraith made an impossible target. It. She ducked inside his thrusts, sidestepped his swings, and then sidestepped his thrusts and ducked his swings. As erratic as she tried to make her defensive move, Sorok still kept pace with her, refusing to budge from his position at the dungeon outlet. Moon midnight was coming, and the wraith finally decided that she must end the confrontation. When Sorok swung out next, she sidestepped to her left, swayed down, and ducked her head so the axe whistled over her right shoulder. In that instant, his right side was exposed, and she reluctantly smashed the chest hard into his torso. There was not enough time for Kepkajna to see if she had killed him or merely knocked him unconscious. In truth, she thought of nothing else but rushing to her wedding ceremony. At precisely midnight, Wadborg and Kepkajna were united together. He was delighted with her dowry gift, a fine suit of armor that would make him the envy of other Imperial jailers. Even more, he was enchanted by his wife's tale of retrieving it from the Shrine of Malakath. Did it occur to you to put on the armor when you knew that it was an ambush, he asked. I didn't want to dent your presence, she replied between kisses, and I certainly didn't want to wrinkle my gown. So there you go. And we're through the zone, thank goodness. So, well, let's loot in here right quick. Same as the other side, a couple of urns and a chest. Now, make a hard save here because sometimes Angervund glitches when you get to the end of the dungeon. Return to Madrisi. Well, gladly. She runs up and dies. That's no surprise. 
you just want to sprint right into here, discover the treasure of Angervund. If you can get through there without any problems, you tend to wind up just fine. Now, we're actually done fighting, believe it or not. The dungeon clears when you learn the word of power, oddly enough. And it's the first word of animal allegiance. Word of power learned. Animal. Animal allegiance. Completed. Find the source of power in Angervund. And we've also completed Discover the Treasure of Angervund. Alright, there's nothing in there I care about. And it's when you complete that quest that the dungeon actually gets cleared. So, what's happened? Well, we've learned the first word of Animal Allegiance, which I need to take off my shout list. We have cleared the location Angervund, so I need to take it off that list. And we've completed the miscellaneous dungeon quest Angervund as well. And finally, I need to tell you what that word wall says, which is... This stone commemorates the horse Sarvira, most courageous animal ever to charge the snowy battlefield and give his soul for his lord. Animal Allegiance has its uses. Naturally, we'll go ahead and unlock it. And now we'll get out of here and head back to Whiterun. Well, not directly back to Whiterun, because I do now want to get smithing to 30. Oh yeah, and now we can poke around this room too. Andrisi doesn't have anything worthwhile. The treasure she was rushing was 13 gold and a broken sword handle. Her greed wound up being our passage to the real treasure. Alright, let's get out of here. We need to swing by the guardian stones and throw on the warrior our maximal gain in smithing. Then we need to head back to Whiterun to offload, train, and, well, I use the word train loosely. Smith, honestly. And, hopefully, we'll actually be able to do some leveling and crank through most of the crafting loop. As soon as I get enchanting ready, I can enchant my eight pieces of jewelry as is. Oh, and that reminds me. Well, I'll need to retrieve my uh, dwarven mace from Whiterun in order to do it. But I did get an empty grand soul gem, which can get me the very last one I need for my gear. I don't think I did any ore mining at all, did I? Nope. All right, good. So we can hit... Oh, and wouldn't you know it, I fucked up and forgot to go to the uh, Guardian Stones first. Ah, uh, Travis, come on. What's wrong with you? Let's go to the Guardian Stones. Put on the Warrior Stone. <sighs> now let's go to White Run. Sorry about that hiccup. I just. I've had enough crashes where video files get corrupted that I'm getting where I like to divide them a little. Especially when I'm about to do something important. <laughs> Alright, that's good. 
can put away the lesser even as we withdraw the Dwarven Mace for one last hurrah. Ah, oh, it's my love come to visit. Is there anything? The gold is flowing nicely. Here's your half of the profits. You're back. Life. I got you a present, Papa. I hope you like it. A boar tusk. Well, that's interesting. Several unknown effects. We'll go with Fortify Health first. That's the second one. I'll put away Smithing Supplies for now. Of course, I'm about to get them back out, but I got a Petty Soul Gem as well. So that goes in here. I need something with Fortify Health on it. Bear Claws will do just fine. Check the girl's chest. It's all fine. I'm actually going to put away my glass gear again. Get out my old clothes. I don't recall that I had anything to do upstairs, so let's go handle the little potion first, just so that's done. I'm actually tempted to run out and do the, uh, fill my grand soul gem first as well. I don't actually need any of this stuff anymore, so I won't bother. Let's just learn Fortify Health, the second of four effects on Boar Tusk. Now, I suspect I can get from 20 to 30 easily with nothing but jewelry. So I'm going to start this off. After I drop that potion. Oh, I never dumped these either. Go figure. Anyway. I'm just going to get my gold and silver ingots. And my gems to start with. And I will wager... That'll turn out to be more than enough to get smithing to 30. Need something? Let's just head out there and see. Tell about you and your honey. You're someone who can get things done. I like that. Gold diamond necklace, that's the single best thing. Followed closely by gold diamond ring. And there's 30 smithing. Let's actually let it get to 30 and then see if if we're at level 43 that'll still be okay because the perk there is augmented shock one which just requires 30 destruction which i've had for a while so here we go we hope level 38 because i might actually be able to stick with this is a health level as is level 39 40 is stamina 41 is Magicka, 42 is Health, 43 is Health, oh, and we're good to go. Awesome. So let's jog over to Enchanting, grab Extra Effect, in Light Armor, 
let's grab custom fit oh yeah and just because I forgot to say so even though it's pretty obvious what it does extra effect can put two enchantments on the same item very good now level 39 we want custom fit 25 percent armor bonus if wearing all light armor head chest hands feet level 40 we want elven smithing can create elven armor and weapons at forges and improve them twice as much level 41 in the alteration tree we want magic resistance one blocks 10 percent of a spell's effects and that's innate at all times very handy we're at 35 percent innately now because we're a breton with that perk level 42 we want necromancy out of the conjuration tree greater duration for reanimated undead and level 43 we want augmented shock one in the destruction tree shock spells do 25 percent more damage now next at level 44 we need smithing at 50 so I could go ahead and do that but I would rather take 10 minutes and crank through my uh, crafting loop at least to the extent I can so for now let's put all this stuff back next up is gonna be more smithing but I think all I'd made was one gold diamond necklace and a few gold diamond rings. So, now that enchanting is at a hundred and we have all the perks we need, oh, it's my love. we can grab the five potions of fortify enchanting we made. We can grab a Falmer helmet, one of our circlets, one of our gauntlets, one of our necklaces, and one of our rings, and enchant them all with Fortify Alchemy. To visit. Of course we need to head to Dragon's Reach to do that. So let's do. Oh, and I almost forgot. <laughs> I also need five grand soul gems. Duh. Otherwise, how am I going to enchant? Good question. Is there anything you need to... Now, we can go to Dragon's Reach and do this. <laughs> Actually, I think uh, self-filled Grand Soul Gems may still work for Hearthfire. So, anyway. I'm already nearly a half hour over, so I think once I get as far as I can in the crafting loop, I'll save 
extra smithing and filling the Grand Soul Gem for the next video. For now, use your, use your five potions. Should be 15% stronger to enchant those items that I mentioned. So, Falmer Helmet, Fortify Alchemy, Grand Soul Gem, and I like to name these such and such of lesser alchemy. And it should be created potions are 26% more powerful. You've got it right if you see that. So let's just do it again with the other four pieces of gear. The gauntlets are the same. Gauntlets of lesser alchemy. Three more. The necklace. Fortify alchemy. Becomes the necklace of lesser alchemy. Same thing here. I think we're going to get the ring next. Yep. Fortify alchemy becomes the ring of lesser alchemy. And the final piece is the circlet. which becomes the circlet of lesser alchemy. So now we strap on all five pieces of lesser alchemy gear. Three, four, five. Sorry, I'm trying to, just trying to take stuff off my list here. All right. So the next step is to wear all this. create six new potions of fortify enchanting. Hopefully you noticed, of course, that we were able to I work for Bellator at the general goods store put on both the Falmer helmet and the circlet at the same time. That's pretty key. Oh, it's my love Let's save myself some extra trips. I need... Well, I don't want to mix things up, so... Let's get six of each. Blue butterfly wings and snowberries. Did you need something, Papa? With all this on, we should be able to make six potions of fortify enchanting that create a thirty-five percent enchanting enhancement and then there they are very good so now we can make our final set of crafting gear all the gear of lesser alchemy is now useless yes it was quite short-lived 
I'm aware. And the lesser alchemy gear can all go in here. Unless you just want to hold on to it for sentimental reasons. And now, with those six potions, we, of course, want six more Grand Soul Gems. And we need a helmet and some gauntlets and a ring and a necklace and a circlet and yes the rough spun tunic we wore starting the game now factors in Is there anything you need, dearest? and we need to head back to the altar of enchanting at Dragon's Reach to create what I more simply call my crafting gear Yeah, this is, this is plenty. So in the next video, we'll go get that last Grand Soul Gem. Although we won't need it. We won't... Eight of our Grand Soul Gems will go towards creating jewelry right now. The other eight, including the last one we need to go fill, won't really be relevant until we've got our final equipment, which requires us to max out smithing as well. Anyway... One of those. We'll start with the circlet, which I think can only do alchemy. Yes. But each one should be 29% on alchemy. And I just call this the crafting circlet. and the crafting helmet. Same thing, 29% alchemy. Then the crafting gauntlets, which I think can do both. Yes, you want alchemy and smithing, should be 29% each. Crafting gauntlets. Necklace can do both. Alchemy and smithing. 29% each. That's our crafting necklace. Next. I think is going to be the ring. Nope, it's the tunic. It can only do smithing. Still, it should be 29%. That becomes what I call our crafting armor. Even though it's not really armor, it's a chest piece, but that works fine. And once more for the crafting ring, which can be both alchemy and smithing at 29% each. That's your crafting ring. Excellent. With that done, that's another step in the process that's finished. All right, let's wear all the crafting gear. We'll look a little silly compared to how we have looked, but that's all right. The first thing 
is to make a bunch more potions. Actually, I can do a little more than that already. I always underestimate how long this actually takes once it's ready, but that's okay, that's okay. We won't really have any use for that last Grand Soul Gem until we get a Penitus Oculatus helmet anyway, which is way, way down the line, but nonetheless, I'm going to grab it. So, first thing is to go ahead and grab all seven Blister Warts and Glowing Mushrooms, and all 16 blue butterfly wings and snowberries. With this gear on, we should be able to make 16 potions of fortify enchanting 37%, which is about where they cap the effectiveness of this loop. So it's worth doing a couple rounds, but not really worth doing any more, which is good. So 16 potions of Fortify Enchanting, 37%. And 7 potions of Fortify Smithing, 
and I typically just call it the ultimate circlet. So if you've got that 48 and 29, you know you did it right. So there's that. I can take it off my list even. Now we got gear or jewelry. So what do we make? Well, I guess we'll start with the rings. I like to do a destruction alteration ring, which I just call, for identification purposes, the DA ring. Next, I do a conjuration illusion ring, which I name the CI ring. What all this is calculated to do is let me have 87% casting cost reductions in four of the schools of magic just by swapping out jewelry. Then we do a combat ring, which is fortify archery and fortify one-handed. And finally, we do what I call a utility ring which is what I wear by default, which is fortify carry weight and fortify unarmed. And now we do the same four with the necklaces. So we do a destruction alteration necklace. A conjuration illusion necklace. And of course, this just all depends on what school I happen to be working at a given moment in time. And then we do a combat necklace, fortify archery and fortify one-handed. And finally, we do a utility necklace. This one I don't do unarmed. This one I do fortify barter and fortify carry weight. There they are. So now, we just got greatly empowered, friends. All these go on the favorites list, so we can switch between them at will. Although I default to wearing the utility necklace and utility ring. And with that, we're just about ready to end this video. I think the first thing I'm going to do in the next video is jump out somewhere to fill that grand soul gem. Then we'll come back here 
and raise smithing to 50 before we get back out and resume exploring. Still, what a relief to finally have enchanting maxed. You saw how fast smithing was going. You saw how many supplies I still had. There are really no more bottlenecks. I don't actually think I have anything to put away, do I? No, because I'm filling the soul gem, and then I'm coming back to do smithing. So I can just end it right here, because I'll be fast traveling away. This has been Let's Play Skyrim. We cleared out Angervund, which was wor a worthy endeavor in and of itself, but much more important is the fact that, holy crap, we finally leveled up. Enchanting's maxed. We've got all our jewelry in our circlet. Next time, we fill a Grand Soul Gem, we raise smithing some more, then we get back to exploring. Until then, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please consider clicking on an ad, liking, sharing, subscribing. It would really help me out. Even if you do none of the above, I hope you know I really appreciate the fact that you watch, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.